yes, we are in progress here, in process and in progress of making the necessary corrections to the occupation of Palestine that the Zionists have undertaken in the name of the Jewish people. So here and now we are here to explain from both a Jewish and Palestinian perspective why this is going to fail because the nation states don't work anymore. They never worked really. They only survived by the force of repression. Well, we're talking about a, a colonial entity here. We're not talking just a state. It's a colonial state entity, which is, is an extension of an imperialist uh, agenda. So it's even worse uh, form of state. It's a colonial state. Yes. This is no a, a... place in, in the 21st century uh, civilized world. It mm. doesn't have that. So Israel is, is nothing but... A, 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 an aircraft carrier, carrier on land <laughs> for the Western imperial in the in the Middle East and yes. in the Arab. Yes, as I mentioned That's before, why. you know the uh, the Zionists, uh, the, these Jewish Zionists, are acting as mercenaries and getting very yeah. well paid to do so. Definitely, that's what uh, that shows uh, very clearly uh, with the overwhelming. Uh, support from the imperialist uh, powers, United States, Britain, Canada, uh, Germany, France. They all came uh, the second day of the, the October 7th uh, breakthrough. They all came the second day or third day showing their solidarity with the Zionist entity, although they didn't say a word about uh, the genocide. It's been uh, perpetrated in their names, by their own money, by their own weapons, on the Palestinian people. Gaza and a little bit less uh, so uh, on the West Bank. The uh, proposal made supposedly in the name of Netanyahu and the <clears throat> Israeli uh, government uh, for a ceasefire, it's called a ceasefire, but it's not really a ceasefire. It's a gimmick, it's, it's, uh, a, it's, a, it's a plan. It's a plan to to uh, prop up uh, uh, Netanyahu, actually, which uh, is give, take some of the Israeli prisoners in the hands of the Palestinian resident, uh, uh, prison, uh, uh, resistance in exchange of another Palestinian prisoners to be released, then uh, continue uh, the war again. It's yeah. so, so oxymoron. Yeah. Nobody yeah. will buy that, uh, you know. So now they're talking about uh, they're tweak, tweaking uh, the plan. So uh, the, the news now they are tweaking the plan in order to uh, woo Hamas into accepting uh, the <laughs> wooing Hamas. No way. <laughs> yeah. So basically, uh, it's just that they those Zionists and their uh, Western, uh, you know, uh, operatives. You know, uh, they don't know that this is not Arafat. This is not Abu Mazen. Uh, uh, okay? This is not a Sadat. Uh, okay, just uh, whatever they offer, they will accept. Uh, uh, these people are, uh, they are independent, revolutionaries. They know what they want for their own people. And actually what Hamas is demanding is not actually demanding uh, anything but what is the international uh, community had ordered? Ceasefire, return of people to their homes, uh, allowing in uh, aid and reconstruction of the Gaza Strip that uh, the Zionists uh, with the American weapon uh, decimate. Yeah. So basically, the Americans yeah. and the Israelis, the Zionists, are playing games. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. So, not gonna happen. I don't think yeah. I don't think I don't think there will be any ceasefire before um, removal of Netanyahu mm. or or um, his uh, fascists. Well, they're all fascists, but to, according to the Western media, he, the fascist government he's leading. Mm. Yes, and I saw that uh, a report that two thirds of the um, Israeli public 
want uh, Netanyahu to be removed. Two thirds now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, but uh, it's still uh, he's still in in, in power. He yeah. still holds a majority in in the so-called uh, Israeli parliament. He has sixty-four seats out of one hundred twenty-eight. You know, and uh, but not Zionist, anymore. Because well, they passed the Supreme Court passed this law, you know, for recruiting the Hasidim, the ultra orthodox. So the Shas party is going to leave his coalition. Well, they just they talks. They just talks. Really? You that see, bad. all of them, all of them, they all of them, they're talking about oh, we will leave, we will leave, but it's only tactics. It's a, it's a pressure tactics. Actually, it's actually it's orchestrated by Netanyahu. Hmm. To, to to pressure more and more, uh, to get more and more. He's he's a he's a very smart tactician, Netanyahu within the yeah. Zionist uh, society. Mm-hmm. When he when Sash say we will leave, okay, well, what 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 that means? They gotta get gain nothing by leaving. Okay, it's not gonna gain anything. Mm-hmm. So the law will will uh, be there. So the Haredim, they have no choice but either accept or leave, leave Palestine. Mm. So the the Agodat Israel and Shas and other uh, religious uh, Zionist parties, they have one of the two choices, either accept the Supreme Court, the Zionist Supreme Court decision of recruiting uh, the Haredim or do you remember when they said we will leave in droves, uh, so-called Israel? Mm. Okay, well, how come mm. they're not leaving? Mm. Well, I read that uh, five hundred thousand have left. I don't. No, but they're the the majority are are secular Zionists. Uh, not <laughs> okay. Yeah, and and they don't the uh, have a um, uh, most don't have a uh, dual citizenship, you know, <laughs> passport that they can go to another country other than in a visit. And so they are faced uh, with a, uh, a quandary, you know, uh, either the, <clears throat> their choice is either permanent war or real negotiations. And what they've offered, you know, Hamas, <clears throat> as you say, and I agree with you completely, is not acceptable because they are calling for merely withdrawal of the uh, military forces to unpopulated areas. And of course, they can come back into the populated areas at any time that they want, you know, because they are and there inside you know and it's an occupation so it's uh, it's unacceptable you know the way this uh, ceasefire proposal is made it's not a ceasefire proposal no, it's a it's proposal a for occupation yeah it's it's and, a pausing the fire for six weeks then we'll talk yeah. about it uh, yeah it, it doesn't yeah. work this way either you have a, a, a permanent ceasefire which you have uh, guarantors, and actually uh, Hamas requested or requested us for Russia, China, and Turkey to be uh, additional guarantor to such a ceasefire. Mm-hmm. And uh, because America is is a side, it's one, it's on the, it's a fighting side. It's one of those. She she is on the side of the Zionists, so it cannot be a guarantor and at the same time being a fighter. Right. So, uh, yeah, yeah. versus also Egypt yeah. and Qatar cannot be guarantors because they're too weak. They cannot impose anything on the Zionists. Yeah. So Hamas insisting at this point that Russia, China, and uh, Turkey to be part of the guarantorship of any ceasefire. So, uh, but uh, meantime, the Zionists has been taking lots of casualties in 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 Gaza Strip. Uh, Either in Rafah or in, in Gaza, or even north in Gaza, in Shaja'iya district, in Bet Hanun, and other areas. Mm. Um, but uh, the, the the picture is very bleak for the population. It's mm. they're on the brink of uh, mass starvation mm-hmm. because the zone yeah. is not allowing. Still, uh, yeah, yeah, incredible. You know, like. Uh, yeah. How can and, uh, you know, like the, the, the you know, they, how can they get away with this? You know, like this is uh, yeah, because so, because the West or the West are sanctioning such act. Yeah, despite yeah. despite all the side show of we are talking with Israel, we we this is not acceptable, and age get in all that uh, you know uh, uh, 
Mirage or uh, all that sh side show by the Americans who are yeah. actually in cahoots 100% with the Zionists. In, uh, they know what's going on. They are planning yeah. the whole thing. And if they want the aid to get in or get through, they will. They can. Uh, yeah. Pressure the Zionists they want, to allow yeah. it, but they don't want. Uh, yeah, you know, like there's a parallel here <clears throat> uh, in the uh, aftermath of the 1982 massacre of 3,000 Palestinians in three days in the camp of uh, Sabra Shatila mm -hmm. in Lebanon under the uh, General Sharon, who became prime minister. That's right. And uh, there they made an agreement, you know, they had occupied Beirut. And but Arafat was uh, in West Beirut with his five thousand, you know, uh, Fatah uh, soldiers, and they made a deal, you know, that the United States was supposed to be a guarantor of security yes. of the refugee camps, and Arafat agreed to leave, you know, uh, uh, and go to Tunisia, you know, with his five thousand soldiers, and they would set up yeah. a government in exile. And then they played around with that, and in nineteen eighty eight, they said they proclaimed the state, you know without doing anything about it. And uh, what happened to the uh, refugees of Sabra Shatila? They were massacred. <clears throat> Even though the United States is supposed to have been a guarantor of the security of the refugees under the agreement, you know, of Fatah leaving Beirut. So United States <clears throat> is uh, good for nothing, basically. Had track record uh, of uh, turning on its own signature. Yeah. That's what happened. Yeah, and uh, it, it thought, doesn't matter, thought, and hmm. and doesn't matter, you know, as well, Ahmed, that <clears throat> that it's and Netanyahu is there or somebody else, you know, they would still, you know, have the same position. They would still be trying to maintain the occupation of Gaza, destroy the revolutionary leadership of Hamas. You know, it's uh, that, that's why Hamas insisting on behalf of the Palestinian resistance and people on having other guarantors. Ah, uh, yes. And such uh, and and a clear clear written uh, mm. you know agreement and, of yes of, under a UN mandate as UN peacekeeping yeah. troops to get in there you know yeah. and uh, and face off you know with the Zionist military to stop them and to, yeah. and to push so them uh, back. so that's that bring us to to the the point I'm trying to make that uh, who's carrying out uh, the the massacre. Actually, the genocide that Palestinian people in Gaza for the past nine months. It's the United States, actually, in the hands of the Zionist uh, mercenaries mm -hmm. who, who put themselves uh, as as a, as a slaves to the Western imperialism mm -hmm. to carry out uh, the uh, or to uh, to work for the for the Western imperialists in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. so, it's the the Zionists are no less or more, they're no less or more than the American system, the, the empire, who are mm. kill, killing uh, every every murder happened in Gaza, every moment. It's done by American weapons, American supplied uh, tanks and artillery and planes, by American uh, support, whether it's international support, political, diplomatic. Uh, Legal, you name it. It's an American. It's the American war, and what the Americans in the White House doing? They just what they call it. It's a damage control or yeah. or, or, or conflict management, making them look like the good pe the good guys and the Zionists are the bad guys. It's a good cop versus bad cop scenario yeah. on the world. Um, sadly. Many people they believe that the Americans could be the good guys. They didn't know what's going on, which is uh, without American support, Israel cannot carry more than carry such genocide for nine months. Yeah. Nine months is not nine days or nine weeks. It's nine months, almost a year, and the world is watching. Guess what? Who's who's holding the world? It's the United States. It's holding the world back by its mighty thuggery uh, power. And who's helping her? All, all the Western civilized world. Mm -hmm. Germany, Britain, France, Canada, Australia, you name it. 
it's mm -hmm. sad. Sad day for humanity in the 21st century. And they're so hypocritical too, you know, because at the same time they're claiming that they're seeking peace and that's that they are proposing a ceasefire proposal and Hamas is rejecting it. This is what they're saying. At the same time that you're supplying the bombs, supplying the bombs and and, uh, and offering, you know, ceasefire, you know, like <laughs> there's a fundamental contradiction there. It Even is. though, you know, the, the, the arms that are being supplied, you know, are, have been uh, cut back to about half of what they were being supplied for before. But that doesn't make any difference, you know, because, no, no, no. you know, the, the Zionist, you know, dictatorship has uh, run out of targets. <laughs> you know, like, that's the only reason, you know, why there's fewer bombs being used, you know, not because the United States has uh, there's nothing, cut there's back on the nothing bomb. left. Exactly. There's, there's nothing, nothing left, left to bomb. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, they're actually, they're attacking lately in the past two, three weeks. They're bombing tents, just tents, <laughs> regular, regular tents. People are living in their tents. Killing and murdering women, children, and men in sleeping in their tents. Yeah. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 70, 80 people die every day. Mm -hmm. And all innocent civilians. Yeah. By American supplied weapons, British supplied weapons. Mm -hmm. The uh <clears throat> the, the Zionists uh claim that they've uh, eliminated a few thousand Hamas fighters. Uh, um but, you know, Hamas, you know, started off with about 27,000 fighters. And even though they, they may have lost, you know, some thousands of fighters, you know, nonetheless, there's volunteers, <laughs> you know, the orphans, you know, who have nothing left to lose, you know, they're volunteering. Hey, you know, 80% hey, of the Hamas fighters are orphans, you know, who have no other choice, you know, but to fight for Palestine because they have nothing left otherwise. Well... First, to start with, there's, nobody knows what's the number of Hamas fighters. Nobody, except mm. their leadership, their military leadership. Mm. The Zionists always throw numbers as if they know what's going on. They say, Hamas has 30,000, 20,000, 6,000, or 27,000 and a half. And <laughs> they have such a such number of missiles. It's like the same story they do about Hezbollah. Oh, Hezbollah mm. has 60,000, 100,000. They have a hundred thousand missiles. How do you know? Did you go in and count them? Did you did ha, has Hamas send you the list, the number list of their fighters? Nobody knows. It's people's fighting. It's the people are resisting the Zionist entity. It's not. We're not fighting. The Palestinians are not an army. It's a people. Whether they are part of Hamas uh, fighting groups or. Uh, Islamic resistance group, Islamic Jihad, or is it the PFLP, uh, Abu Ali Mustafa brigades? These all these people are just civilians, and when a war erupts, they carry arms. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not like they like to make it as if there's uh, there's an army versus, versus an army. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's people mm -hmm. versus a, a, a Nazi like uh, army. It's mm. a colonial Zionist army versus mm. the people of of the of uh, Palestine and Gaza Strip. These mm. are the people. So of course, there's no home, there is no family has not lost one or more of its own people. So of course, everybody wants to fight. If I I am there, I'm in my sixties. If I live there, and even I'm I'm sick, and I, somebody come and kill all my family, because. I'm going to carry uh, the arms and go fight, no matter mm -hmm. what. Yeah. Nobody got to hold me back. <laughs> so this yeah. is this is a silly, silly uh, charade the Zionist and the Western media plays uh, about the numbers and uh, how many percentage they destroyed. And they, we, we, we destroy, there's four uh, brigades has, uh, Hamas has in, uh, in Rafah. And we 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 finished three of them. There's one more left. It's just it's just yeah. nothing but charade games. They yeah. know nothing. They know yeah. nothing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, from uh, ah, I think Steve is connecting. Yeah. Oh. Okay. We're just talking. <clears throat> Great. 
Okay. Is your audio working? Oh, you're still connecting? You're connecting to audio, it says. Great. <clears throat> uh, I'll, I'll explain to you, Steve, you know, the, the main point that we were discussing is the um, is the, the false uh, ceasefire proposal that uh, has been proposed by Blinken. That's about the only one, you know, who's been, <laughs> who's uh, been pushing this, you know, and uh, supposedly Netanyahu is supporting this, you know, but he he says anything, you know, he's two faced liar. Dishonest. Yeah. So. Yeah, he's a Zionist. What do you expect from a Zionist? So, uh, what, uh, um, what, uh, uh, Steve, you know, like we were considering is, uh, is the actual, you know, situation in there, uh, of a people's revolution, you know, like it's the people who are arming themselves as various factions in order to, uh, fight against an occupation. And that, uh, there's uh, more volunteers now for Hamas than ever before, because there's, more families that have been decimated than ever before. And uh, the survivors are certainly willing to fight back. So I don't know if we have your audio, Steve, you know, but I was wondering, you know, uh, your uh, <laughs> view on the uh, ceasefire proposal that has been made and fabricated by the United States in any case. Uh, uh, we contrasted, it <laughs> excuse me, contrasted this proposal and Hamas's reaction to it, you know, with the reaction of Arafat in Beirut in 1982, when Arafat agreed to leave, give up the struggle there, left with his 5,000 fighters, you know, to Tunisia. And supposedly the United States was to guarantee the security of the refugees in the camps of Sabra Shatila. And they ended up being uh, uh, 3,000 were killed in three days. And the United States did nothing. So the United States, you know, there's no, uh, you know, uh, diplomatic uh, intermediary here. You know, it's the United States that is propagating the war. At the same time, it's claiming that it's offering, you know, a ceasefire and that uh, Hamas is the one that's refusing to end the war. This is so hypocritical that it's, well, you know, it, un, uh, unbearable to even mention it. Um, that's the way we, we see this, you know, and... Uh, I think that uh, you can appreciate how the Palestinians would see this as well, Steve. Well, um, how is the audio, first of all? How, how's the audio, okay? Good, yeah. The audio? Okay, all yeah, right. Yeah, it's good. Well, you know, I'm just going to say this. Uh, I'm seeing the paper here. There's a rally in uh, Israel. The U.S. said, we work in truce, hostage offered revive talks as family rallies for deal. You know, I guess I'm just kind of, um, there's nothing that the U.S. will ever do that's good enough for the forces that are being oppressed because the U.S. is always behind the oppression. So any deal that they, they offer is going to be a lousy deal. They, they can't offer a good deal because it's not in their DNA to offer a good deal. <laughs> it can't. So anything. So the people who receive the deal have to then look to look internally to themselves to figure out what can we, what how can we respond in a way that our forces will benefit. That's. I mean, I look at it like in Vietnam. Let's look at um, Afghanistan, Iraq, um, even now with with, uh, with uh, Ukraine. Everywhere the United uh, everywhere the United States intervenes mm -hmm. with any kind of uh, military force or deal for peace, the deal is always presented in a, in a manner that's going to benefit the United States and its allies. Yeah. So. Hamas, the Palestinian resistance, are somewhat between a rock and a hard place because they're never going to be given an offer that's a good offer. Mm -hmm. they, they have to then respond in a way which is going to benefit 
their people and, and their movement. And that's the crux of the matter. That's how I see it. Yeah. That reminds me of uh, Malcolm X when he said that uh, <clears throat> white America has uh, has put a uh, a knife into the back of the black nation. And they expect that by pulling the knife out halfway, that the uh, you know the black nation is supposed to uh, supposed to thank them for right. doing so. You know, like right. con conceding. You know, like some sort of you know minor sort of uh, concession somewhere somehow. You know, as if yes, exactly. that's going to solve the problem. You know, but the knife is still there, and they have no and, intention uh, of taking the knife out because the knife gives them the control over the over the person. And uh, that's all they're interested in is control. And they're all, they're propagating this war still and still supplying the <clears throat> the arms and the ammunition to, to continue this nine-month war. It's not even a war. It's a genocide on a, on, a, right. on a population, civilian population that is resisting and resisting rather successfully. So uh, the proposal for a ceasefire with the continuing occupation of the Gaza by the Zionist military is completely, you know, like, uh, well, it's, it's, mean, a, it's, it's, it's an occupation proposal. It's not a ceasefire proposal. Right. Right. Know? And a, 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 a real, a real ceasefire would mean, well, during this ceasefire proposal, during this ceasefire period, since Israel is the belligerent party, they have to put down their weapons or, or, or withdraw from Gaza. Mm -hmm. They have yeah. to see. They have to withdraw. You're the yeah. belligerent. You have to withdraw. But in the eyes of the United States, they're okay. not the belligerents. Therefore, everything they'll say will maintain the Israeli advantage. And that's how the United States sees things. Right. That's how it operates in all instances. Yeah. So again, I'll say it's up to the Palestinian resistance to come up with a with a countermeasure that, based on how the U.S. negotiates. That will give them the room that they need, and that's up to them. We, we, if if the Palestinian resistance doesn't accept the proposal, we have to accept their rejection of the proposal. Yeah, accept it, because they have determined it's not in their interest to accept the proposal. Yeah. People who are support them, we can't be getting involved. Well, they should have done. We should, no, 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 uh, -uh, uh, uh, no. They are smart enough to know what to do, and we should not uh, underestimate. Their political, military, economic, and, and 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 historical knowledge. It's just you know it's it's just a bad situation. Sometimes your boss will give you an offer, and you you respond to the offer, but you remember he he or she is still is still the boss, and and he or she can still fire you. So you have to negotiate from those positions, and the Palestinians are in a very similar position. The Israel the United States have become their boss. And they need to be free of the boss. So, I mean, you would hope that the international community could throw their weight in on this peace plan. I hear nobody <laughs> saying a damn thing. What's, I mean, people need to be, I mean, that's where, you know, people to me are being a little too quiet or being too, too a little too polite. Does the proposal see, stink? They, at, least, at least Russia, for example, go ahead. Go ahead. has denounced some of these plans on, on by by abstaining or vetoing them at, 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 at the UN Security Council. You know, the Palestinians need some help here. They need some help to, to get better proposals on, on the table. To the United uh, States, we are not saying proposals stink. The active, the anti, the pro-Palestinian movement must say these proposals stink. Mm -hmm. We must speak up in the Palestinians' favor. We have to do that. We we live in the United States. We have to show them solidarity in, in that way. Write letters, have rallies, uh, have press conferences. Proposals isn't good enough. Here's 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 here's, here's what we should pr propose. Even if they ignore it, you send a message to Palestinians. Somebody in this country supports you enough to say it within the within the body of public. Proposals our government is giving is is not good enough for you for for you to be free. We want you to be free. Mm -hmm. So that's all I see for the proposals. I'm sorry if I'm being a little long winded, but. It just bothers me. These proposals, they all stink. They all stink. Ahmed. You know, the, the, the Zionists and the, their American uh, supporters, or the Zionists and the Americans' enemy, actually, I'm talking about the state uh, right. uh, empire. I'm not talking about the people. 
they want to negotiate with the with the with the Palestinians of of how to surrender in order to be fed. That's what basically it is. In order to give them food and medicine, mm. okay, or part of it, you're gonna give us some of the prisoners. Then we think about, you know, uh, lifting up the siege and maybe maybe a ceasefire. Mm. But that's not. We are the boss. We will tell you what to do. This is how arrogant and out of touch the Zionists and their allies, the American administration, are. They are actually telling the world and to the Palestinians, we are starving you. We are letting you to die. To die with wounds or uh, much need uh, medication, etc. in order for you to give us some uh, prisoners and uh, then we'll think about if we want to end this war or not. In, 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 in summary, United States uh, is more Israeli than the Israelis themselves. She wants Israel to look always as uh, the winner, the victorious, the, uh, has the upper hand over the, what's happening in, in Gaza. So that's why what this is the first uh, uh, mass starvation made by uh, state actors in the in the history of the world while all, the entire world looking in on life seeing children women everybody dying from starvation for political aims what the political aim is to have make the colonial imperialist power united states and israel victorious this is how sick this world is, and the world they cannot do anything. What world? Who's who's the world? The world at this at this moment is is known. Who has the power? United States, uh, Britain, supported by most of the Western countries, then Russia and China. Russia has its own war in Ukraine, it started by United States, and China has its uh, high eyes on high alert on Taiwan issue. So uh, the rest of the world can't do anything. They just look at it uh, and say, you can't do anything. This is how, how sick this world is. We don't know what will happen. Hamas is still steadfasting about the demand of the international world, which is uh, by UN resolution, the International courts uh, demanded in Israel to allow food supply, let the siege, stop the war, etc. So Hamas is not ma making demands. Hamas is actually l literally asking what the world has been asking: stop the genocide. Hmm. Uh, Palestinians, <clears throat> uh, uh, as you mentioned, Ahmed, you know, we're looking to um, have uh, some kind of intervention from. Uh, uh, China, Russia, or Turkey, or all three as uh, UN peacekeeping forces to disengage the uh, Zionist military and keep them off the backs of the Palestinians with the no-fly zone and all this, you know, this is what <coughs> could be done, I mean. And the UN Security Council has passed the resolution for the ceasefire, so it should be done because this is the legal decision of Security Council with the abstention and, of the United States, which considers that because they abstained, that the, the resolution is not binding. <laughs> Just because the United States abstained. The International you know. Court of Justice had all demand, demanded in one way or another stop the genocide, whether it's yeah. by bombing or starvation. Stop the genocide. That's what we need. It's 2.3 million Palestinians has been has been in siege, under siege since the year 2000, actually, not 2007, mm. 2000. We're talking about 24 years, 2.3 people are living uh, on a diet, as one of the Israeli leaders he said. We calculate exactly what kind of food can get into Gaza. We calculate how much each and every Palestinian consume in calories. And we have been putting them on diet. This has been said about 15 years ago. I can't remember the name of the general. 
Mm. We're talking about the starvation has been going on for 24 years. Now it's more and more accelerating due mm. to the aggression. Yes. Okay. Uh, I need to tell you that we have two minutes left in this session. So that gives us time to uh, make concluding remarks. And <clears throat> uh, I would uh, point out that we are... Uh, a rare, uh, you know, voice, you know, speaking out as to the true nature of the ceasefire. A lot of people have been misled. I think that the whole uh, protest movement has not become, has not uh, realized, you know, that this ceasefire proposal is a complete manipulation. They seem to be <laughs> sort of, you know, remaining quiet about it well, and abstaining you know, as if, you know, it could possibly, you know, do some good for the Palestinians, you know, but, you know, they shouldn't uh, take it, uh, so lightly, you know, that, uh, and I think that just because they have a big protest movement, that this, the state, you know, is going to listen to them. No, the state is going to ignore them and continue with this uh, genocidal assault, you know, because they can get away with it. And nobody's going to stop them right. physically. And that's what's necessary. So please, each of you, to, you know, uh, make your uh, concluding remarks now so that we don't get cut off by Zoom, and uh, then we can uh, publish it on uh, YouTube again and uh, and let, you know, our advice, you know, carry forth so that uh, this movement uh, doesn't get stalled into a dead end uh, like they're proposing with this uh, occupation proposal. It's not even the ceasefire proposal. So go ahead. I we have one minute. I think, I think uh, the resistance will continue until uh, the Zionists and the Americans accept the international uh, conditions to stop the, the fight. Mm. Uh, this gimmick by the United States and uh, the Zionists is see-through. Everybody sees it in the Middle East, at least. And uh, we need a real ceasefire for to save the 2.3 million who are on the verge of total starvation. But the Palestinian resistance will never lay down their arms. Steve my closing remark is victory to the Palestinian resistance thank you